So I'm speaking with Alan Greaves, the CEO of Do Not Age, a company that conducts and sponsors research and also sells anti-aging supplements, um, many of which I'm taking. And I will be running some questions by him that came in from members of the Facebook group or sometimes in private messages. So, Alan, are you ready? I am ready, and thanks for having me, Nils. It is really nice to see you. So, first question that came in is, I'm curious what Alan's thoughts are on rapamycin. You had provided some funding to, I believe it was Brad Stanfield's study, which is looking at the combined effects of rapamycin and exercise. So, yeah, I mean, look, everyone seems to be hyped up about rapamycin, and it is interesting to see. For example, I'm not taking rapamycin because of the way it works, but for the data, which we've now funded, may change my mind. When you say you're not taking it because of the way it works, can you go into that a little bit more, please? Yeah, sure. So, so rapamycin stops your immune system from working properly, really. Um, it's It's a bit of a simplification, but... Sometimes in older people, lowering immune response can be a good thing to stop the immune system sort of overreacting. But I personally think if you're a healthy person, particularly a younger one, I'm in the mid 30s, then I, I think it's too risky at the moment. But the study that we've funded may provide more clarity um, and say that rapamycin is actually a good thing for all people, including healthy people to take. We just don't know yet, hence why we need the study. Are there supplements that you're aware of that have a similar effect in the body to rapamycin, perhaps without the possible side effects that you were talking about? Yeah, so I mean, there's a few. There's berberine, resveratrol, quercetin, uh, fisetin or fisetin, as some people call it, and sulfora boost. They've all kind of been shown to have similar effects on the body uh, as rapamycin. So when you say that they're similar, are you thinking about the fact that they are AMPK activators? Yeah, so it depends on on the product. But the if you take resveratrol, for example, rapamycin, it looks like it inhibits cell growth and, and reduces uh, tumor formation. So it could be helpful for cancer. Resveratrol has also shown that um, in, in various studies. So quercetin is the, is the same that it may help prevent sort of organ rejection by regulating the immune system. Uh, that's some of the examples. What was the other one? Sulfora boost. I mean, it's, again, it's about the anti-cancer effect, which is, you know, sulforaphane itself has been shown to stop the replication of, of cancer cell growth and sort of induce the apoptosis where the cells clear themselves out and rapamycin is also purported to do the same thing. So what supplements are you currently taking yourself? Pretty much at the moment, I'm taking everything that do not age.org offers. Um, so yeah, if you go to our product page, there's a there's a whole big list. In fact, I've got some here. There's the NMN, one of the more popular ones. Uh, you know, EKM here. I keep them on my desk because it's easy for me to take them throughout the day. Do you take all of them every day or are there ones that you alternate or take breaks from? Yeah, most most of the time. At the minute, I'm in a calorie deficit as I attempt to lose some fat. Uh, so I'm taking a couple of extra things, like I have a, an L-carnitine here uh, because I, want, I don't want to lose the muscle, um, but I do want to lose the fat. So I'm in a calorie deficit, but I'm still exercising and, and doing sort of compound exercises. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, usually I would take them all. If there are some times when I have to go away for a weekend or there's a two-day business trip, I need to be in a certain country. And if I just take hand luggage, then taking 20 bottles with me, it doesn't always work. So sometimes I don't take them or I'll just take the sort of Cert 6 and NMN and things like that for those two days. Uh, but in a perfect world, I would take them all every day. You mentioned in a video a few months ago that you had gotten stem cell therapy. I believe that was maybe a year and a half or two years ago. And I was wondering if there were any results that you could share with the group and if you had plans to get stem cells again. Yes. I mean, my 
so the the stem cells I had were injected directly into my shoulder capsule. Yeah. It wasn't the most pleasant thing in the world, but my both my shoulders had issues and they're both now almost fully functional. I've had two professional boxing fights uh, since that video was made, so they must you know the shoulders must be okay. Uh, it's clearly a lot better than it was. Um, and I think oftentimes stem cells are seen as a bit radical, but you know, as far as I'm concerned, that it did work quite well for me. Mm. And uh, I guess a word of warning to anyone who's considering doing it, I did have to go to South America because countries like the US and the UK, they have slightly more stringent laws, which of course can be a good thing, but can also slow progress as well. Um, thankfully, I know the person that owns that stem cell company down in Colombia is where I had it. Um, and yeah, it, so it, it did work well for me. Can you ask Alan if he's found any specific supplements that help with his boxing or a specific diet. I have a friend who's a boxer who swears by the carnivore diet, but another friend who's a boxer eats a lot of carbs. I went carnivore for about a year and put on a lot of muscle. Just curious what Alan is doing in relation to boxing besides the supplements. Yeah, so the supplements help me massively with the boxing. Uh, boxing is uh, like most physical and, and combat sports in general it's a, it's a young man's game and although you know mid 30s isn't old it is in boxing terms so i think the creatine is very important for me to keep the muscle whilst also losing fat as well the carnivore diet did help me to get in shape originally um, when i first got into camp but i then reintroduced carbs before each fight, just to make sure I've got plenty of energy. Is there a difference that you can describe between Do Not Age's product CERT-6 Activator and the Fucoidin sold by other companies? Yes. Uh, I mean, CERT-6 Activator is the only verified activator of CERT-6 in the world. There's a reason that we created it. The problem is that not all Fucoidins and seaweeds activate cert six in fact some of them have the opposite effect so that's why we test each batch to make sure it has a very strong activation of cert six and are those still being tested in dr vera gorbanova's lab yeah that's right there's not many places in the world you can actually do the test so we rely on professor gorbanova's lab in new york state to do that for us okay cool is Do Not Age's Search 6 activator made from moss or seaweed? The ultimate raw ingredient is seaweed. Does Do Not Age have any plans to come out with a C15 supplement? No. Uh, I mean, you can get enough C15 that you need from your diet. So that's what we right. recommend that people do. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely doing that. Any thoughts on SPM? special pro resolving mediators and plasma legends i don't know enough about that to pass comment so i wouldn't want to speak on something about which i'm not an expert i noticed that you had lowered the cost of cert 6 activator and nmn is there a chance of prices going down on the other supplements yeah, it wasn't just nmn and cert 6 activator there was a couple of others as well and we're always doing what we can to try and lower prices at do not .org. Of course, though, you know, we can never let that get in the way of quality. That's the reason that we have the reputation we have. But making things more affordable has been important to us since we started all those years ago. And those of you that were around in 2019 will remember how we single handedly reduced the price of NMN by over 50 percent, which is huge compared to what was available at the time. And you'll notice that a normal supplement company will charge you whatever they can get away with. Um, whereas do not age to org as a health research organization, we charge you as low as we can. And we've done that across the board. We've done it consistently. We always will do it. When you talk about do not age being a health research organization, can you talk about that a little bit more? What do you mean by that? Sure. So a traditional supplement company will spend you know, maybe half their entire revenue on marketing, just trying to make themselves sound good and better than the next guy. And when it comes to R and D and actually what they put in the products, they use fillers. They don't, their dosage is based on price. You know, there's a lot, a lot of negative things that I don't want to get into too much, but ultimately what we do is we start with the end in mind. And the goal is uh, the 
most superior health outcome for our members. And then we work backwards from there and go, okay, so this product is going to do X, Y, Z. Now, how much dosage do we need? Okay, we need this much dosage. And then we work all the way to the end. And the last thing that we work out is price because we know how much it costs us. And then we have our margin because we need profits to be able to put back into research. And that's what we sell uh, on our website. And then you, we use those profits to put back into research. So sometimes we do our own research. So with, with Certix Activator, you've seen a lot of that. The mouse trials and the human trials with uh, quercetin and NMN, you've seen some of that. But there's also we also realize that you know we, we can't do everything. And so now we also give out ingredients and funding for other uh, laboratories as well. So we're approached every single day by multiple labs and researchers asking us for products, because obviously if you're going to do a clinical trial, you need the purest ingredients. So they come to us uh, and funding as well. Sometimes if they've got no funding or they're struggling because a lot of big governments won't see aging as a disease and therefore won't fund the studies. So we help out there as well. Is there anything new with the FDA and NMN? Glad to see it's still out there, but I worry sometimes they will shut down sales in the United States. There's no news. And if there's ever an update, we will email. So, you know, people definitely shouldn't worry. Again, one of the things I would ask is just to look at history. Um, you go back to November 2022, go back and look at your emails all the traditional supplement companies emailed you saying stock up now, NMN won't be available, et cetera, et cetera. And of course that wasn't true. Um, the world didn't end. So if you look at what do not age.org emailed you, we said the complete opposite. You don't need to bulk buy. There's no need for it. Let's make sure everybody can get their hands on some. The price is staying the same. It's not, the price isn't going to jump up. It's not going to become a drug and nothing has changed in that time. So thankfully uh, time has proved us right. And Remember that whatever happens, whatever decision the FDA makes, and we're very confident about it, but if the worst were to happen, do not age dog will always ensure that there is something to keep your NAD levels healthy, whatever may come. So that's our promise. Some people report that NMN or other types of vitamin B3 like NR or niacin can make some people feel fatigued. Dr. Chris Masterjohn wrote about taking methyl supplements such as TMG when this happens, but some people still experience this. Do you have any um, advice or clues for those folks? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of variables for somebody feeling fatigued, but I think ultimately if you want more energy, then the, the CERT6 activator is what you should be taking. NAD boosters are great for many things, including recovery, but for energy, it has to be Certix Activator. Biggest piece of feedback that we receive from people taking Certix Activator is that they feel this boost of energy. Um, and then so with some people, it's a bit softer and then they stop taking it and they feel more fatigued. So, you know, it's like I say, we one of the cool things about uh, DoNotAge.org is not only do we have the science side, but because we have so many hundreds of thousands of members, we have all the aggregated feedback as well. So we get to know what people tend to feel on certain supplements. So Do Not Age had been conducting some research, I think, on mice, I believe it was, and Cert6 Activator. Is there any news or have there been any developments in that research? Yes. So the mouse study is promised for publication this year. It's extremely late for various reasons, um, mostly outside of our control. It's also not Professor Gorbanova's fault either. But... Uh, the results were already emailed out. So all we're waiting for is the publication and the peer review. Um, you know, if you people search their emails, they'll see from about six months ago, we emailed out those results. Essentially, it showed that the mice increased in every metric that we measured, essentially. So, and we realized it was working through, mainly through reducing inflammation. So activating the cert sex helped to reduce inflammation, which then had the downstream effect of faster walking speed, better eyesight, better fur, uh, coat color and condition, um, improved gait, things like that. So it's called the, the frailty index. And basically they were you know, better in every metric. And of course they live longer, didn't get diseases until uh, much later as well. So we're actually looking at uh, putting that into humans now. So I, I do have a, an exciting update for that. If you, if you want me to share that, I can. Yeah, love to hear it. So brand new human trial. Uh, I had this conversation just a few days ago, which is exciting. 
uh, it's actually going to be published before the other cert six antibiotic human trial because that one's going to take so many years we're looking at cancer patients it's going to take a long time it's important but it's going to take a long time so this one we've designed it to be short and snappy and you know 60 participants older healthy adults as well so not people with already with conditions and we're going to give them certix activator to see if those mouse results are replicated we're very confident because we have hundreds of thousands of people taking it and you know with great benefits so we're very confident about it we already know that it's going to work but the clinical data is what needs to happen so randomized placebo controlled clinical trial you know will help put a lot of people's minds at ease and it's always the best way in the long term anyway um the professor that we're teaming up with it's obviously myself professor gobanova and dr andrea meyer uh, some of, i'm sure some of the people in your group will have heard of her she's based over in singapore there uh, and so it's the national university of singapore and they're the ones that are going to be doing the study this is one of the reasons why we can get things done faster it's not only is it just a six-month study but also because the sort of their version of the fda is set up to make things happen and make it a little bit easier and more conducive to get more studies done whereas the usa's fda can be very difficult to deal with at times oh that's exciting by the way that's very interesting i'll be looking forward to the results of that human study it's just fascinating stuff is there any news about do not age in relation to urolithin a no unfortunately not we spend a lot of time and money trying to fix it but ultimately nestle has billions billions and billions of, of, of funding and they will happily spend it to keep people like us from providing the same ingredient at a, at a more affordable price it is the dark side of capitalism um that people often miss as well you know once a company becomes so big they can they can and often do bully smaller companies which is a big shame a big shame but we're still working on it we're looking at lots of different avenues um that you know we're we're trying to find ways around it we did find one that would work legally and had some good we had some good results with the testing but our legal people said well you were right legally the first time so when we when we put urolithin a on the market we weren't actually doing anything wrong so we were in the right however it, when nestle comes knocking with a lawsuit if you don't concede to them then you will be litigated until you run out of cash, which then, you know, stops your entire operation from running, which obviously stops more research. So, yeah, it's not a nice, not a nice one, but I'm still, uh, you know, still working on it. And I think we will win eventually, but that one might take a, a long time. I saw the video where Ellen was talking about boxing. I was wondering how the match went. I think it's really cool that he was boxing. Is he still doing that? Yes. So I still train, but uh, I had two professional boxing fights in 2024. It was great fun. I, I love the sport. I've always loved the sport. I can't recommend it for longevity because, you know, repeated blows to the head is not good for long-term health. But I do still train because I love it uh, and it's it's my favorite sport. So I managed to get the win in both of those fights as well. So, yeah, that was uh, it was a good time and really enjoyed it. People are doing so many different diets these days. You have vegans and carnivores and keto dieters, et cetera. Uh, do the supplements work best with any particular diet? No, I, I mean, the supplements are part of your diet. So, you know, they can be taken alongside lettuce or beef, you know, <laughs> whatever you're, whether you're, you're, you're vegan or carnivore or anything else. So, Provided you stick to the instructions for the important ones, such as, you know, resveratrol should be taken with a source of fat, things like that, then, yeah, it, it can work with any diet. The, the body doesn't discriminate between different types of fats, for example. Does it matter, in your opinion, if you take the supplements when you're fasting or should they be taken with food? Thanks in advance. You're very welcome. And that depends on the supplement. So, again... Using the resveratrol example, you, you must take that with a source of fat. Otherwise, it's not really worth taking. Uh, whereas something like NMN can still be taken. You know, I've, I'm taking NMN at the moment when I, while I'm fasting and it's fine. And all the ones that I'm supposed to take with fat, I just wait until I have my one meal a day, which is what I'm currently doing. And I take those with that one meal. 
Okay, this maybe is a related question. I was wondering if all of the supplements should be taken together, or is it better if they're spaced out during the day? So I think regularly taking them is the most important thing. So, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I've got a team with me and I get reminders of take these, take these. And so, you know, I take them when I'm told to, but making sure that you take them every day is way more important than it is to say, take this one at 9.15, take this one at 9.30. Um, if somebody wants to email into hello at do not age.org, then they'll, they can send you a, a sort of recommended timesheet. But again, I want to clarify that the most important thing is the fact that you take them every day. On those days when Alan is feeling run down, maybe a cold or virus is coming on, are there extra or additional supplements that he takes? Well, I'm very fortunate that I don't really get sick anymore. But on the rare occasion I do, I will double my NMN dose to three grams, uh, drink even more water, which is the number one drink. Mm -hmm. And probably if I'm really feeling bad, I, I probably won't exercise on that day and try and extend my resting time. When you talk about taking pretty much all of the Do Not Age supplements, so NMN and NR both work by increasing NAD plus levels in the body. Do you take those together? Do you take them separately on different days? No, just I just exchange with whatever the office sends me. So, you know, for me, it's not that important whether I have NMN or NR. Uh, the reason to take those is to boost NAD. So you don't need both. Some people do, and that's fine. It's not going to harm you in any way to take both at the same time. But I just take whichever one I've got. At the minute I've got, I've been sent NMN, so I'm taking that at the moment. Does Do Not Age sell any IL-11 inhibitors, or do you plan to in the future? We do. We do. There's a IL-11 inhibitor bundle on the website at the moment, so people can go check that out. It's, uh, it's three products. Uh, it's obviously off the back of the study that I'm sure everyone's aware of uh, within your group. So, yes, it's just called the IL-11 inhibitor bundle. Any thoughts about the... NMN Bumblebee trial or the new Alzheimer's study that has just been published? Yes. So, you know, we're, we're, we're continuing to see more and more trials on NMN. And I think that's a fantastic thing because there's, you know, I'm sure as you know yourself, Nels, there's a lot of doubters. And slowly but surely over time, they're all being proven wrong. They're all being proven that we're right. Um, you know, everybody uh, that takes NMN and understands the benefits of boosting NAD. So one of the trials that's using do not age.org pure NMN is a trial on bumblebees that have been exposed to pesticides. And the hope is that the uh, NMN will reverse the damage and protect them from further damage from the pesticide. Um, and then if that's successful, what we'll then do is move that into humans, which again, does take a little bit longer, but once we can see the success of bumblebees, you know, it makes everything a little bit easier to get the approval for the human trial. Well, I was going to say that, I mean, this is really speculative, but um, there've been a lot of problems with, bum with bees, with bumblebees and various things, including pesticides that can endanger bee populations. So um, maybe that is something that, at some point, beekeepers might, I know there needs to be research to verify whether that's true or not, but it would be nice if a product came along that could help with that. Well, I think from what I've read, and again, this is not my area of expertise, but the vast majority of the problems with, excuse me, bee populations is to do with insecticides and pesticides. Mm -hmm. So if we can prove this theory out, then I do think it can have a big impact on bumblebees as well. Mm -hmm. yeah god just fascinating there's so many there's so much research going on and so many interesting things um is there anything else that um you would like to share with the group or talk about so i was reminded just before we jumped on to make sure i don't forget mentioning the containers um because oh. we have improved our containers again they are now stronger, uh, more efficient. They have a nice wide mouth. I've got my probiotic here, which is in a new one. It's, it's you know, you, you, you really struggle to squeeze it in if you try. 
um, which means that in transit, there's less likelihood to get damaged. Uh, mm. It's still the same uh, wide mouth in these small ones. And then in the larger ones, uh, they also have a wide mouth now. So uh, at one point, we did decrease the larger container's mouth uh, in order to try and be more efficient. Um, but what pe what we found was that people were frustrated about not being able to get their hand in or get the powder out when it got towards the end. So we've gone back to those wider containers, but with the same sturdiness of this one. So yeah, it's all about becoming as efficient as we can, uh, as good to the planet as we can, increase the sturdiness, make sure the products are staying good for as long as possible. And yeah, people love the new containers, so we're happy with the progress. When you think about the potential, when you kind of speculate about the future, I'm curious where your speculations run about what people might achieve, what, you know, maybe in 10, 20, 50 years where we might all be going with this. Any thoughts on that? Well, I think when we get to 50 years, you would hope that something like epigenetic reprogramming or something similar would be usable by then. Uh, and that means that provided you're not in a complete state of disrepair, that we can kind of keep you as healthy as you are pretty much for uh, a couple of hundred years, if, if you want to. But in the meantime, you know, with what we've got already, there's no reason why we can't all be reaching 120 and be perfectly healthy. Um, my goal without epigenetic reprogramming, uh, with, with sort of supplements and a healthy lifestyle, is 150. Uh, and of course, as with everybody, I only want to get there if I'm healthy. But I think 120 is, is very, very possible now. Now we know. Um, of course, if you're already aged and you're just trying to do what you can about it, I understand that. But prevention is so much easier than cure. So the people that are starting to take these things from their 30s, for example, are, are going to see even more compound benefits than those that started in their 60s. So you were mentioned, you were saying that about your box, saying that obviously getting repeated blows to the head is <laughs> not necessarily the best thing for longevity. It might be really fun to engage in the competition, but um, yeah, it's <laughs> not something you want to base your life around. But I'm curious, you know, sort of stepping back from boxing for a moment, what are your thoughts on exercise or types of exercise that, from your perspective, from your understanding, and maybe from your understanding of having done some boxing and some other specific sports, might be beneficial to both human health and longevity, perhaps delaying the aging process yeah so for me it's it's resistance training is the big one again you're going to need all types of different training you need some cardio things like that but there's multiple reasons why resistance training is more important and you know sarcopenia or muscle wastage which gets a hell of a lot worse as we age is can only be thwarted as much as as many supplements as you take as much meat as you eat you can only thwart it if you actually exercise those muscles and put them through some kind of strain um, you know, people often ask me what's the number one thing I can do for longevity in general and I always just say exercise you know our bodies were made to move we're both sat down doing this interview we we're not really designed to sit as animals we we should either be lying down to sleep or we should be up and walking about so you know there's a there's a lot of damage we do to our bodies just in day-to-day -day life then you add on you know times that by 70 years of aging uh, and you really need to you really need to look after your body and and moving it in healthy ways is, is the most important. Great to talk to you. Great to see you. Um, yeah. it's, it's just really fun. I mean, it's really fun to have a chance to connect over the group's questions, but it's nice to see you again, connect with you again. Um, you're always welcome to come visit again. I'll have to go for another hike or walk in one of the parks around here. So. I will. If I ever I'm in uh, the, you know, the west side of the, the Americas, I always make sure to pop in. Uh, I've been doing a lot more of the East at the moment, but yeah. whenever I'm there, I will pop in for sure. Can I just say thank you to everyone in the group that that, that left a question? Uh, obviously, if anyone wants more information, they can email us on hello at do not age org. And thank you, Nils, for having me as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. You have a great day. Just a reminder that if you want to try any of Do Not Age's supplements, I take several of them myself, and I have gotten a lot of benefit from them. Their discount code is 
PATHWAYS in all caps. And using that discount code will give you a 10% discount off of all the products on their website. It's also a way of supporting the work that I'm doing and this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.